How on earth did it come to this? Events in Elite are now seven years in the making, and they're about to overspill in what may well prove to be a somewhat of a disaster. The Thargoids are come in, and may be in a new form, or at least that's how it seems. The so-called Thargoids, space anomalies widely believed to be Thargoid in origin, are now visible from Earth. We don't yet know what it means, but we do know how we got here, and in many ways it is all a bit of a mess, stemming from numerous problems that could easily have been avoided. Before I get into the many mistakes though, I want to provide a bit of context by looking back at the game's history. The Thargoids N have had an intrinsic relationship with the Elite Universe. In real world terms, they are close to 40 years old. After making their first appearance way back in 1984, the aliens soon become closely associated with the Elite franchise. In terms of in-game lore, the original game was set around the year 3100 or so. The Thargoids were very much present within the game, as with the modern version, the aliens would pull unsuspecting pilots from which space, defeating them in 1984 was extremely challenging for many players. The Thargoids were, to all intents and purposes, absent from the sequel Frontier Elite 2, with just static models in, uh, present in a few select locations. In First Encounters though, the third game in the Elite series, things really did kick off. The events in this game led to the first Thargoid War. The game itself ultimately had two endings, depending upon the player's action. Players could either deliver a virus to the aliens, committing genocide, or they could choose to let them live. The reward for letting them survive was perhaps the preferred option, and it meant the aliens sharing their technology with humanity. Choosing to kill them, however, led to the Thargoids disappearing and never being heard from again. This is the ending now considered canon. It was perhaps the first of many big mistakes, this time letting Thargoids or attempting to outright kill Thargoids. Fast forward to the 34th century and the Thargoids began to re-emerge one hint at a time. Elite Dangerous released at the end of 2014. It was followed by a long string of events, some might say drawn out, that led to the reappearance of the Thargoids. The events occurred between the in-game years of 3301 and 3308, totaling eight entire real-world years, inclusive of 2015 through to the end of 2022. During this time, to name a few events, mysterious unknown alien artifacts were discovered. Later, another device, the Unknown Probe, was also discovered. These broadcast a strange message that players needed real-world tools to decode. The following year, unusual so-called barnacles were discovered on the surface of planets. Arguably the best year for Thargoid-related events and content was 2017. At the start of the year, the first Thargoid interdictions occurred. These were both shocking and visually impressive. Six months later, huge alien bases were discovered on planetary surfaces, and by the end of the year, the conflict with the Thargoids had begun. In December 2017, the aliens started attacking human space stations as well as human fleas. Now, since 2017, new variants of Thargoids have appeared over time, and Frontier have updated Elite to include new unlockable weapons that could be used to fight against the aliens. Generally though, weapons and variants aside, 2017 was the last year of any significant large new Thargoid-related content. It's not so much that the five interceding years were completely vacant of Thargoid content, it's just that there was nothing there of major note. But then in 2022, things kicked up a notch with the Azimuth Saga and the arrival of the so-called Stargoids and all that that then entails. Now it's been a multi-year journey at this point, from the reappearance of the first unknown probes in 2015 through to the appearance of the Stargoids in 2022. Eight years, and yes, many mistakes have been made along the way. In many ways, it has been interesting to watch this story unfold, both in terms of its creation as well as its implementation. Now if we go back in time even further, as early as 2013, 
Frontier were always clear that Elite would contain curated content, that, to all intents and purposes, they would act as the Dungeon Master controlling and dictating the events within their game world. Players were of course welcome to come along for the ride. Originally though, it was stated that players would be able to have an impact upon the story. The famous quote from David Braben where he stated that player actions would dictate whether the relationship with the Thargoids would be peaceful or hostile. Now it never quite came to pass in that manner, and the Thargoids of course are hostile and pretty much by default due to the in-game curated events. Now it's here, within the context of the story itself, where the many mistakes were made. As soon as humans discovered the barnacles, their first thought was not to marvel at their alien nature, instead attention was quickly focused upon how the barnacles could be harvested for human use. Humans quickly found that meta-allies taken from the barnacles could be put towards their own agenda. And naturally, at the time, many players felt that this was a bad idea. After all, harvesting what may well be alien property could very likely come with some, well, negative consequences, shall we say. Unfortunately, there wasn't really any way or many ways that players could react to this in-game. At least, there was no way to protest or prevent it. No way to interact with the game to redirect the story. Nevertheless, it wasn't all empty action. Players did find that they could UA bomb space stations. That is, it was discovered that selling alien probes to space stations would eventually cause problems for those stations, literally shutting them down and basically uh, preventing certain services from functioning. Emergent gameplay then. It was fun whilst it lasted, although also it quickly was abused. Shutting down stations essential for community goals become a chosen activity for some players. Eventually, Frontier decided to remove the ability to UA bomb a space station and thus remove that entire feature. Now, back inside the game world, within the story itself, more mistakes would be made. The discovery of alien bases soon led to players interacting with them, in some cases even bringing Guardian technology to the bases in order to provoke a hostile reaction. What's more, the governments and institutions of the elite galaxy soon grew wary and eventually tired of the Thargoids themselves. Whilst the Thargoids seemed to remain completely peaceful, some decried the alien interdictions as a hostile act. Keep in mind that the Thargoids wouldn't and didn't attack after interdictions, but people felt the act of interdiction itself was hostile enough. In short, humanity rode roughshod over the Thargoids and their property again and again. It was unsurprising then that the Thargoids eventually directly attacked. Now, many players felt that the Thargoids had indeed been provoked, that they were simply defending their own interests. Other players felt that the Thargoids didn't really care one way or another, that the aliens were simply reacting to uh, well, on an instinctual level. This is a theory backed up by David Braben himself, where in an interview he made the comparison of insects moving infiltrators out of their territory. Insects don't do this out of hate or aggression, it's simply something they do. And then of course, the biggest mistake of all was made. The populations of the elite galaxy placed their trust in salvation, a mysterious benefactor who claimed to possess the ability to save the galaxy. But ultimately, his super weapon was turned against humanity itself. As a result, the Thargoids are now more aggressive than ever, and the consequences of those actions still play out in the game today. Today, close to a decade after the game's launch and many years after the arrival of the Thargoids, it's all a very interesting dynamic to watch and to think about. Frontier's use of curated content has been amazing in concept, although it must be pointed out it's been far less amazing in execution. But that said, it's entirely possible things would feel vastly different if all of these events had played out over two or three years rather than eight. The pacing, unfortunately, has been abysmal. The lack of player choice in how they choose to react to their involvement in the story has also been somewhat of a shame. Often, the players have been left simply with the choice of combat and little else. To be fair though, community goals have offered up some additional options, and in recent times, Frontier have taken note of community role-playing. In fact, some player discussions 
have even been included in Galnet law posts. The most prominent of these player-led discussions tend to focus on the many mistakes that have been made. There's often an implied and occasional outright declared thought, Thargoids didn't need to be the enemy. Proponents of that line of reasoning believe that humans are shot first, that humans encroached first, and today we see the massive in-game consequences of that. Ultimately then, in hindsight, we can look at David Braben's famous quote again, that players would be able to choose between war and peace. But really, does anyone actually believe that if Frontier had given players that option, that today we would be in any different position with the story? In most games, the vast majority of players always shoot first, and many don't even ask questions later. Shooting seemed to be more than enough. And with a whole bunch more shooting going on in 2022 and probably into 2023, who knows where all this will lead. Either way, I suspect it is very unlikely the outcome will be a peaceful Thargoids. That then brings us to an end of this video. What is your opinion on Thargoids? Should they be completely eliminated? Should we have been given more of a choice in how to interact with them? Or are they inherently peaceful creatures and we've made them our own enemy through, well, mistakes? Do let me know in the comments section below, I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.